We got a uh, steam boiler here, heat exchanger corroded on the top. Sent fixtures to the factory. They said it's oxidized or oxygen corrosion. And uh, the boiler is 14 years old, cast iron. Here's so it sprung a leak and then totally corroded but it was from the inside I'm going to confirm it when I start breaking over breaking up the other cells here it was starting a leak the factory says you get a pinhole steam and then the steam just accelerates the corrosion really fast on the outside we'll find out when I break it open because I'm changing the heat exchanger on this one and I'm breaking this boiler down here and uh, pulled the sight glass and then look at the uh, this was the top of the sight glass it's totally packed with rust not any chance of even you could see in there of that level reading accurately and uh, and that rust is from the heat exchanger as it was rusting apart now it looks like we found the root cause of why this thing failed and it had a massive uh, water leak and then when you have a big water leak like that it brings in a lot of fresh water and that fresh water just is full of oxygen and uh, because the fresh water here in Frederick comes from the river and uh, and then when you have oxygen in the water it eats through the cast iron really fast so whenever there's a big uh, water leak you definitely want to get that fixed this qualifies as a big water leak this is the bottom side of the condensate return and uh, and it was pretty much gone and then you can see right there it was leaking for a while and uh, and then just go into the basement floor here we got the boiler broke down and uh, here's where the two leaks in the heat exchanger so the cast iron got a pinhole leak and then the steam finished it off and there's not much left there you can see all that just popping right off and this side just was starting to leak very small this side had the bigger leak right here we'll look right here you can see right there that was where the oxygen corrosion was taking place same thing on that side there and then the steam pipe is actually in pretty good shape because uh, the steam is quite pure this was more of a water quality issue which caused cast iron to rot out at 14 years we got the uh, heat exchanger broke down here look inside there's where we had the major corrosion that I was starting to see spots that were starting to do that same thing let me show you here right around here You see right there, it's starting to flake off. Some of those spots peel off with your finger. There was a big one right there, it just popped right off. The oxygen gets underneath and it starts splitting the iron like cement. Here's the condensate side. Starting to get pretty fouled up in there. Whenever a uh, boiler's worked on, you have to look at the condensate. Like here's a really long condensate line. I'm gonna do a suction on that. It runs way down. See what condition that's in. Right here, 
that thing's starting to clog up. So I'm gonna clean that out. This one here needs to be replaced. Here's what happened. The pipe got buried in the dirt from the wall. And that's always a bad thing because it brings in moisture and keeps that pipe wet. So now there's like nothing left. The iron is basically turned into sponge on the condensate line, so you gotta change that pipe. We got the new boiler in. It came in in uh, two pieces where it split right here and then we used a, uh, a rebuild kit to put it together. Fixed a slab here and before it was just sitting on a block and it was going off level. Now we put some rebar in, put some cement. That's why I got the boiler up in the air right now. This is day two. I'm gonna let it uh, sit and uh, let that cement dry and we'll have a nice good foundation which is important on steam boilers and uh, and we got off we got some corroded pipe there was able to break that off and uh, so we're ready getting some new pipe threaded for the condensate and uh, which runs back to the boiler so tomorrow we start putting the piping together well we passed the uh, 40 pound pressure test or I leak checked everything putting the pipes back now specific order the way these pipes go it's important that all these condensate lines stay clean and uh, here's a long one it's a one inch so I'm gonna clean it out with high power suction I'll see what the flow is like, and then if the flow is bad, I'll run a snake through it. Actually, wasn't too bad. A few chunks in there. I could feel the chunks when they're getting sucked out. Got the boiler fired up now. Still got to do a few steps on it. First of all, no leaks. Everything's good. New condensate line here. Verified all the safeties are working. We have to do a couple things. First, we have to skim. First thing we got to do is we got to skim the top of the water and do that for about 30 minutes. And uh, that'll pull the oils off that would be on top of the water. Uh, I'll do a water change. You want it to, but I'm going to run it for a while before I do that. And uh, then we're going to go on a chemical treatment. Uh, to keep the oxygen down, which is why the old boiler failed, and uh, it also maintain the proper pH, which is going to be about 9 to 10, so very alkaline uh, water, and then uh, the boilers will last 50 years. You maintain the water quality in them. Okay, next we're going to do a skim. What we got going on right here, basically just skimming off the top of the water. And that gets the oil out of the boiler. Because all your oils will float to the top.
and do this for a little bit. Hey, this only needs to be done on new boilers or when it pipes were replaced, whenever oil was added to the system. Because oil, there's an interesting video on uh, YouTube that shows the effect of um, oil on uh, water. It basically acts like a sheen and makes the uh, the steam bubbles not even. So I'm, now I'm adding a little bit. You see our skim water is getting a little clearer. Grabbing the oil off top of the water. I'll do this about 10 more minutes. After skimming, that gets the oil off the top. Now we have to treat the boiler, and the treatment's going to stay all year round. And uh, we have to treat for pH. You want the pH to be very basic, very alkaline, around 10. And then you want the oxygen control, which are the nitrites that whenever makeup water is fed in it'll take the oxygen out of the water and uh, Rector Seal makes one with a dye indicator so it's real easy to tell if uh, how much makeup water you're using because uh, the dye will disappear so in this boiler I just put a thing on the top put a valve on the top to add it And I'm gonna chase that with some water so I don't corrode my valve. The boiler's fixed up. One other thing, it has a mercury thermostat, which is gonna short cycle. And I notice it takes this thing about 30 minutes before it builds up enough pressure to get the steam all the way to the top floor. So this feeds four apartments. So I'm gonna swap out the thermostat and go with the Honeywell set it for steam and the steam's going to limit to a one hour cycle and that way every time it runs it can get enough head to heat the entire building evenly rather than just sort cycle and heat the first floor so everything's looking good this job's turning out well i hope you liked the video thanks for watching